how many three digit numbers are there for which the product of their digits is more than 2 but less than 7 more than 2 it could be 3 4 5 6 product is 3 1 into 3 is 3 so it has to be 1 1 3 so 1 1 3 could be 1 3 1 3 1 1 3 can be written as only 1 into 3 straight away we can do this 1 1 5 1 5 1 5 1 1 these are prime numbers, they can only be written as 1 into themselves. Of course, 4 and 6 can be written in other ways, but let's start with this. 114, 141, 411, 116, 161, So far, so good. 4 can also be written as 2 into 2. So, put two twos and a 1. Here, 1, 2, 2 and 3 variants happen. 3 more here. 6 can be written as 2 into 3, apart from 1 into 6, of course. So, this is 1 into 2 into 3 this will have 6 variants so for prime numbers we don't need to worry only 3 variants for composite numbers those 3 variants will exist and then we need to look beyond and so so in how many 3 digit numbers are there there will be 3 here 3 3 3 12 plus 3 15 plus 6 21 21 3 digit numbers there for whom product of the digits will be more than 2 but less than 7. f of 5 plus x equal to f of 5 minus x for every real value of x. f of x equal to 0 has 4 distinct real roots. Then the sum of these roots is a wonderful question. Right? So I tried some algebraic methods of solving it and then went nowhere with it. And f of 5 plus x equals f of 5 minus x. And so, think about this, you draw the graph, f of 5 plus x is equal to f of 5 minus x, so f of 6 is f of 4, so we have 6 and 4, f of 7 is equal to f of 3, 7 and 3, if f of 6 were here, f of 4 would be here, f of 7 were here, f of 3 would be here. Whatever value in between, it will be like that. So, 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 some curve like this, some curve like this, some curve like this. It's going to be a graph. You can imagine a graph like that. And so I just want to uh, dwell on this. I tried this, but then it didn't, it didn't take me anywhere. It is, it is. It looks like it is symmetric around 5. Yeah, so what? And it has four distinct real roots. So let's let's break this framework. Let's assume that it cuts somewhere here and then cuts somewhere here. Two roots. Therefore, it will cut here and cut here. Four roots. Now we are on to something. There are four roots. Think about it. If f of 12 were 0, assume that 12 is a root. That means f of 5 plus 7 is a root. That means f of 5 minus 7 should also be a root. f of minus 2 should be a root. From 5, if you move some number of units to get a root, you should move the same number of units this side to get another root. Now we are on to something. So, navigating from 5, this side if there is a root, that side there is a root. Maybe you navigate 7, maybe you navigate 12, maybe you navigate 15. Forget that. Idea here. Suppose this and this are roots. If you add these two, they will be of the form 5 plus k and 5 minus k. 5 plus k plus 5 minus k is 10. Roots come in pairs. Sum of any one pair is 10. There are 4 roots, 2 pairs, 20. Roots have to be of the form 5 plus k and 5 minus k. They have to, be, they have to come in pairs. 5 plus k plus 5 minus k is 10. 2 such pairs, 20. We reinvested 10,000 at 5% simple interest and after exactly 2 years, Joy invested 8,000 at 10% simple annual interest. How many years after Vero's investment will their balances, that is principal plus accumulated interest, be equal? Let's assume it will be equal after n years. After n years, Vero would have 10,000 plus 10,000 into 5 by 100 into n. Joy would have 8,000 plus 8000 into 10 by 100 into n minus 2. 
Why? Because Joy is investing it for two years lesser. That's it. Solve this. We should get. And five by hundred, hundred gets cancelled. This is five hundred and hundred gets cancelled. This is eight hundred n minus minus sixteen hundred. Eight hundred into minus two. This is equal to this. Ten thousand. This side is also so two thousand plus five hundred n is eight hundred n minus thousand six hundred. Bring this thousand six hundred this year. Three thousand six hundred is equal to three hundred n. Eight hundred minus five hundred. Mark off two zeros. Thirty six by three n is thirty six by three twelve. Viru invest for twelve years. Joy invest for ten. Their balances would be same. The train traveled at one third of its usual speed and hence reached the destination. 30 minutes after the scheduled time. A wonderful speed instead of x becomes x by 3. That means time taken t would become 3t. A very simple question. This 3t is 30 minutes after the scheduled time. So the extra 2t is 30 minutes, or t is 15 minutes, or when train travels at x, it takes 15 minutes. When it travels at x by three, it takes forty-five minutes. On its return journey, the train initially travelled at its usual speed for five minutes. Lovely. So we're talking about the return journey. So it goes like this: return journey is like this. On its usual speed for five minutes, usual speed, it would have covered the whole distance in fifteen minutes. So for five minutes, coming back like this, one third of the distance would have been covered. But then stop for four minutes for an emergency. So stops for four minutes. Four minutes get lost here. And so, so nine minutes are down so far. The percentage by which the train must now increase its usual speed so as to reach the destination on scheduled time is nearest to five plus four nine minutes are gone. The total time taken, the scheduled time, which is fifteen minutes, so the train should cover this distance. In six minutes. If this four minutes break had not been there, it would have covered in ten minutes. Lovely question. So what it would have covered in ten, now it should cover in six. This speed were x. This speed has to be x into ten by six or x into five by three. If the time taken should reduce, speed should increase. In it's the same ratio. 10 falls to 6. X should increase to x into 10 by 6. X into 5 by 3. X goes to 5 by 3. X, an increase of two thirds of x, or 67 percent. The beautiful question because you're just thinking in terms of ratios and you're through. You don't need to do distance by time or speed, speed into time or distance. None of that. Just think in terms of ratios. You're good to go. Log 5 to the base 4 equals log y to the base 4. Times log root five to the base six. Take this this side. We are through. Log five to the base four by log y to the base four. This is nothing but log five to the base y. This is log root five to the base six. Let's call this as k. Six par k is root five. Y par k is five. Square this. Six par k is root five. Six par k. Whole square is five. Y power k is five, which is nothing but six power k. The whole square. Or this is thirty-six power k is five, which is nothing but y power k. Or y equals thirty-six. Log root five to the base six, same as log five to the base thirty-six. The number of real valued solutions to the equation 2 par x plus 2 par minus x is 2 minus x minus 2 whole square. Beautiful question. You think about this. 2 par x and 2 par minus x are both positive. Fine. The minimum value this can take. This is of the form y plus 1 by y. The minimum value it can take is greater than or equal to 2. If it were negative, it will be less than or equal to minus 2. If it is positive, it is greater than or equal to 2. So this side is greater than or equal to 2. This side, this is 
greater than or equal to 0 or this part is less than or equal to 2. From 2, you are subtracting a non-negative number. So maximum value the expression can be is 2. Return. This has to be greater than or equal to 2. That has to be less than or equal to 2. The only possibility is if both are equal to 2. Be equal to 2 when x is 0. Put x equal to 0. 2 power 0 plus 2 power minus 0. This is 2. But if you put x equal to 2 here, we get 2 minus, sorry, x equal to 0 here, 2 minus minus 2 square, 2 minus 4 equal to minus 2. It doesn't work. This will go to 0 when x is 2 at that time, it is not 0. So there is no case where this is equal to 2 and this is equal to 2 or we will have 0 real valued solution to this. A straight road connects points A and B. Car 1 travels to from A to B and car 2 travels from B to A, both leaving at the same time. After meeting each other, they take 45 minutes and 20 minutes respectively to complete their journey. It's wonderful. It's a standard template. I've seen this template. We appeared many times. C1 this way, C2 this way. And so they, after meeting, they take 45 and 20 minutes. So they meet somewhere here. So, and then C1 takes 45 minutes, C2 takes 20 minutes. Let's assume C1 has taken T minutes and C2 should have taken the same T minutes because they meet. Okay. Now, their speeds are constant. So, the ratio of their speeds will be the same. The ratio of time taken should be the same. If C1 takes T minutes and C2 takes 20 minutes, or C1 takes 45 minutes, C2 is 8T minutes, this by this should be equal to this by this. The, the distances are not the same, the ratio of time taken to cover the same distance will be the same. The traveling uh, this time by this time should be equal to this time by this time. T by 20 equals 45 by T or T square equals 900, T is 30. In other words, C, C1 takes 50% more time in both instances. C1 takes 50% more time. That means C1 is slower. And so if C2 took time t, C1 will take time 3 by 2 t. C2 speed where x, c1 speed will be 2 by 3 x. Two thirds of x is 60 kilometers per hour. x is 60 into 3 by 2, 90 kilometers per hour. This template you should have seen before. And if you know that template, then this question becomes a complete walk. This is where practice helps. Doing tons of questions, you're likely to hit upon many templates. So make sure you do those tons of questions. A, B and C are positive integers such that sum of A and the mean of B and C is fine. A plus B plus C by 2 is fine. The sum of B and the mean of A and C, A plus C by 2 is 7. The sum of A and B is, okay, let's multiply this by 2. 2A plus B plus C is 10. 2B plus A plus C is 14. Lovely. I want to I want to find a plus b. If I add these two, we'll get 3a plus 3b plus 2c. I don't want that. If you subtract one from the other, c will disappear. You subtract the right way. Subtract this from this. I don't want negative numbers. b minus a is 4. This is tricky. This is tricky. We're not going anywhere with b minus a. b minus a is 4. How does that help? We want a plus b. Okay. Let's do this. B is A plus 4. So plug that in here. So 2A plus A plus 4 plus C is 10. 3A plus C is 6. Lovely. This is where this three positive integers part comes in. I tried this question originally and did not ac accept that. And I was trying to algebraically solve it. Three positive integers 
3a plus c is 6. So the minimum value a, b, c could be is 1. You put a as 1, c is 3. Put a as 2, c is 0. That's not possible. You put a as anything more than 2, c will have to be negative. Or a has to be 1. That means b has to be 5. C has to be 3. We've got all three numbers. The sum of A and B, 1 plus 5 is 6. That, that, that positive integers term is given in order for us to crack this funda. Then don't do this algebraically. Think about it. Pause and then figure it out. X equals 4096 to the power 7 plus 4 root 3. which is the following equals 64. Now there's a bunch of things where being numerically comfortable is very helpful. 64 square is 4096. This is 2 power 6. This is 2 power 12. That is helpful. So this square root idea involved here somewhere. And so x can be written as 64 square whole power 7 plus 4 root 3. Wonderful. So that is that is that could be helpful. The second thing, which of the following equals 64? So, we still don't know how to get to 64 from here. And so, we can say square root of x is 64 to the power 7 plus 4 root 3. Or square root of x to the power 1 by 7 plus 4 root 3 is 64. 1 by 7 plus 4 root 3. 7 plus 4 root 3 is a beautiful number. Because 7 plus 4 root 3 into 7 minus 4 root 3 is 7 square 49 minus 16 into 3, 48, which is 1. The reciprocal of 7 plus 4 root 3 is 7 minus 4 root 3. Or square root of x to the power 7 minus 4 root 3 is 64. Where, how do we get there? Okay, this is x power 7 by 2 by x power 4 by 3. This is x power 7 by 2 minus 4 by root 3. Sorry, it should be 4 root 3. It's given incorrect. It should be 4 root 3. No, 4 by root 3. 4 by root 3. That doesn't work. 4 by root 3. It's tough to reconcile. This is x power 7 minus 4 root 3. This is also incorrect. It should be square root of x power 7 minus 4 root 3. This is x power 7 by 2 minus 2 root 3. Yep. This is x power 1 by 2 whole power 7 minus 4 root 3. This choice works brilliantly. Choice A, if it had been 4 root 3, we would have exploded. It is 4 by root 3. So we don't have to worry about it. Choice C takes us to 7 x power 7 by 2 minus 2 root 3 or x power half whole power 7 minus 4 root 3. Numerical friendliness, being friendly with picking that 7 plus 4 root 3 and 7 minus 4 root 3 are reciprocals. 4096 is 64 square. That really pays off. So it's a, it's a cruel question if you can't pick that. The mean of all four digit even natural numbers of the form A, A, B, B, where A is greater than 0. I spent a long time doing this. Luckily for me, I did not find any of these answers in the first three iterations. So therefore I got, so I had to find the right answer. So it's an even number of the form A, A, B, B. So B has to be even. So does B has to be 0, 0, 2, 2, 4, 4, 6, 6, 8, 8. A need not be even. A is greater than 0. 1, 1, 0, 0, 2, 2, 0, 0, 3, 3, 0, 0, all the way till 9, 9, 0, 0. Likewise, 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, all the way till 9, 9, and so on. So, 9 numbers here, 9 here, 9 here, 9 here, 9 here, they're totally 45 numbers. If we add all of this up, then we should get somewhere with that. How do we add all of this up? So, think about this. 11 plus 12 plus 33 plus 44 plus 55 plus 99, 9900, we can add all of those up. That's common across the board. So, how do we do this? We have 1100 plus 2200 all the way to 9900 the whole thing into 5 plus 0 into 9 22 into 9 
फोर इंटू नाइन सिक्सटी सिक्स इंटू नाइन एटी एट इंटू नाइन दिस इज सम टोटल ऑफ एवरीथिंग दट वी आर लुकिंग फॉर वी नीड टू डिवाइड दिस बाई फोर्टी फाइव वी आर थ्रू सो लेट सिंप्लीफाई दिस फाइव इंटू हंड्रेड टाइम्स लेवन प्लस ट्वेंटी टू प्लस थर्टी थ्री ऑल द वेट इज नाइंटी नाइन प्लस नाइन टाइम्स ट्वेंटी टू प्लस फोर्टी फोर प्लस सिक्सटी सिक्स प्लस एटी एट डिवाइडेड बाई फोर्टी फाइव लेट्स टेक द न्यू मेरेटर फाइव इंटू हंड्रेड इंटू लेवन इंटू वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री प्लस टिल नाइन विच इज नाइन इंटू टेन बाई टू प्लस नाइन इंटू लेवन सॉरी नाइन इंटू ट्वेंटी टू इंटू वन प्लस टू प्लस थ्री प्लस फोर Divided by forty-five. Ten by two is five. Nine into five is forty-five. This is nine into twenty-two into ten. Nine into five is forty-five. So make it two. This forty-five disappears. So we have five into eleven. Fifty-five into hundred plus twenty-two into two. Fifty-five hundred plus forty-four. Five five four four. Lovely. Maybe there's a more elegant method of doing this. I don't know that. So, elegant method. What might it be? It's possible. The so, average of all of this is fifty-five hundred. Average of all of this is fifty-five twenty-two. Forty-four. Sorry, fifty-five twenty-two. Fifty-five forty-four. Fifty-five sixty-six. Fifty-five eighty-eight. Equal weightage. Average of all of this is fifty-five forty-four. Of course, some beautiful elegant method. Average of all this. Average by columns. Get those averages. Average by the row. Get that average. Midpoint, midpoint, midpoint. I first threw beautiful method. Feeling bad that I didn't think about it. X plus one by x, the whole square minus three times x plus one by x plus two equal to zero. Simple. Let's say x plus one by x equal to y. Y square minus three y plus two equal to zero. Remember, y is greater than or equal to two, or y is less than or equal to minus two. Anything of the form x plus one by x, you should know this again. This is y minus one into y minus two. Equal zero, y is one or two, y cannot be one. X plus one by x cannot be one, so y has to be two. X plus one by x equal to two has. X plus one by x equal to two has only one solution, x equal to one, or this has one real solution. A person spent fifty thousand to purchase a desktop computer and a laptop computer. Fifty k, a desktop and a laptop. We sold the desktop at a twenty percent profit and the laptop at a twenty percent loss. Point two d minus point one l. Overall, he made a two percent profit. Then the purchase price in rupees of the desktop is super. Point two d minus point one l is. Two percent of fifty k. Two by hundred, so it will go away. Two into five hundred thousand. Point two d minus point one l is thousand, or two d minus l is ten thousand. We know d plus l is fifty thousand. The total price. Add these two. Three times desktop is sixty thousand, or cost of desktop is sixty thousand by three, which is twenty thousand. Lovely. Among hundred students, X one have birthdays in January, X two have birthdays in February, and so on. X not equal to maximum of X one, X two, X three till X twelve. Then the smallest value possible of X not. So all hundred could have birthdays on on January, so X not could be hundred. Technically speaking, X not could be ninety, X not could be fifty, fifty people in January, others being distributed. We want to find the smallest possible. X not cannot be three, because if X not were three, X one to X twelve, all of them being three also, will get a total only to thirty six. X not will be lesser, and the numbers are as close to each other as possible. Hundred by twelve is eight point something. So you can have a bunch of eights. Eight, 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 eight. Twelve eights take us to nine to six. We could have eight, 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 eight eights taking us to sixty-four. 
9999 that will take us to 100 smallest possible value of x not is 9 everything cannot be 8 but if you have a bunch of 8s and a few 9s this total can be achieved in which case x not will be 9 Two persons are walking beside a railway track at respective speeds of two and four kilometers per hour in the same direction. So a railway track A is going at two kilometers per hour. B is going at four kilometers per hour. A train came from behind them and crossed them in ninety and hundred seconds respectively. Train crosses them. That means the length of the train is crossed. Relative to the train speed is t. Relative speeds are t minus two and t minus four. T minus two and T minus four crossed in ninety and hundred seconds. T minus two, the faster vehicle traveled in ninety seconds and hundred seconds. Wonderful. So the ratio of the speed should be the opposite of ratio of the times, or time taken into speed is constant. T minus two into ninety is T minus four into hundred. T is the speed of the train. Sorry, I should pick a different variable. Ninety minus eighteen is twenty minus forty, or T is twenty-two. The train is traveling at a speed of twenty-two kilometers per hour. Lovely. This is twenty kilometers per hour. This is eighteen kilometers per hour. Lovely. Now the train alone travels. So traveling at twenty kilometers per hour, the train takes ninety seconds. Traveling at twenty-two kilometers per hour, how much time will the train take? Ninety into twenty by twenty-two. Make it eleven. Make it ten. Nine hundred by eleven. You go eight times twenty. Eighty-one point some large number. Eighty-two is work. X square minus seven x plus eleven whole part x square minus thirteen x plus forty two is one. Sounds like an incredibly tough question. But think about this: any number par zero is eleven, so this could go to zero. And if you have a number one point six over anything apart from zero, it cannot be one because if it's one point six par positive number, it'll keep going higher and higher. Negative number, it'll keep going less than one. It can be equal to one only if it were zero, or the only time a non-zero power can give us one is one power something is one. It's very simple. So x square minus thirteen x plus forty-two equal to zero, or x square minus seven x plus eleven equal to one. Solve these two. You're good to go. X minus six into x minus seven. Zero, six or seven. We need to substitute that to verify, but both in both cases it's going to be some some integer. It, we can even say it'll be a positive integer. So three thirty six minus forty two plus eleven. Yeah, positive. Nothing to worry. Substituting works. Or here we have x square minus seven x plus ten equal to zero. X minus two into x minus five equal to zero. X is two or five. You put two or five. You put two. Two square minus twenty-six plus forty-two. Again, nice positive integer. Nothing to worry. You put five. Also, we'll get a positive integer. Nothing to worry. Two, five, six, seven. All of these work. Four values. Hang on, hang on, hang on. There's one thing we have missed completely. We can even get one as minus one. Par an even number will give us one. We'll have to verify that. How do you verify that? X square minus seven x plus eleven equals minus one. X square minus seven x plus twelve equal to zero. X minus three into x minus four zero. X could be three or four. Minus three power. If you put x as three minus one power, some number could be one if that power is even. So put x as three. Nine minus thirty nine. Plus forty-two. Nine minus thirty-nine is minus thirty plus forty-two. This is twelve. So x equal to three works. Put x equal to four. That will definitely work. Sixteen minus thirteen into four 
52 plus 42 16 minus 10 this is 6 that's also an even number we get minus 1 power 6 so 3 4 could work as well so 2 and 5 could work 6 and 7 could work 3 and 4 could work or there are 6 possible values I missed this one and I got 4 because I completely forgot the minus 1 power 4 thing so beautiful question you have to worry about this going to 0 this going to plus 1 this going to minus 1 in the time when this is an even number the area of the region satisfying the inequalities mod x minus y lesser or equal to 1 y greater than or equal to 0 y lesser or equal to 1 is beautiful let's draw this one y greater than or equal to 0 this is this y less than or equal to 1 y equal to 1 is this this region we're talking about this band mod x minus y less than or equal to 1 okay mod x minus y equal to 1 or y equals mod x minus 1 now y equal to mod x is a curve like this mod x minus 1 will be a curve like this shift it down by 1 so this is 0 comma 0 this is x axis this is a line y equal to 0 this is a line y equal to 1 we're talking about this band here on top of inside that band sits this y equal to mod x minus 1 line so this point will be minus 1 sorry 0 comma minus 1 put x equal to 0 y will be minus 1 this point when will y be 0 when x is 1 1 comma 0 or x is minus 1 minus 1 comma 0 when will y be 1 so 1 equals mod x minus 1 mod x should be 2 2 comma 0 or minus 2 comma 0 or this distance is 4 this distance is 2 we're talking about a trapezium of height 1 and sides parallel sides 4 and 2 half into 4 plus 2 into 1 half of 6 3 square units a solid right circular cone of height 27 centimeters height 27 centimeters is cut into two pieces along a plane parallel to its base at a height of 18 centimeters from the base. At a height of 18 centimeters, we cut it off. The difference in volume of the two pieces is 225 cubic centimeters, the volume in cubic centimeters of the original cone. So this is 9. Remember, if the height is 9, the, the, uh, the radius we can find. The height is one third of this height. Radius will also be one third of this radius. Similar triangles. Height is one third and radius is one third. Volume will become one twenty seventh because pi r square height thrice over. It's like length, width, and height three dimensions. So if this volume, this this tiny cones volume, where v large cones volume would be twenty seven v. This first terms value will therefore be twenty six v. The difference in volume of the two pieces is 225C. 26V minus V is 225 cubic centimeters. The volume in cubic centimeters of the original cone. That is 27V. What is that? 25V is 225. What is 27V? This is 9. V is 9. 27 into 9. The power of 3, 243. A circle is inscribed in a rhombus with diagonals 12 and 16. Diagonals 12 and 16. Nice little rhombus here. Diagonals of a rhombus are perpendicular bisectors of each other. So it will be 6, 8, 8, 6, 10, 10, 10, 10. A circle is inscribed inside this. Beautiful. Beautiful. So we want to find the ratio of area of circle to the area of the rhombus. Area of rhombus is very simple. Half into 6 into 8. 6 into 4, just 24 square units in the bag. If we find area of the circle, we're through. If we find the radius of the circle, we're through. 
really and how do we find that beautiful how do we find that think about this i spent a long time thinking about a very good question radius will be perpendicular to the side of the rhombus why so because tangent is perpendicular to radius side of the rhombus is a tangent to the circle right so if you find radius we are through so i'm going to take one of these beautiful triangles carved out by half a half a diagonal and half a diagonal this is 8 this is 6 this is 90 degrees drop this altitude we are told that this is h you can use the idea of similar triangles and get there or you can say we can we can substitute area as are equal half into 8 into 6 is half into 10 into height area is base into height half into base into height whether you take this as base this as height or this as base this as height area should be same the half gets knocked off height is 48 by 10 or 24 by 5 the height of the right angle triangle is nothing but the radius or area of the circle is pi r square height so it is pi 24 by 5 into 24 by 5 that is the area divided by 24 area of the rhombus half into 6 into 8 area of circle to area of the rhombus area of the rhombus okay area of the rhombus is not half into 6 into 8 it is half into 12 into 16 96 so made a mistake there which way i was worried none of the choices are matching thankfully the choices are available for this one it is 96 and not 24 i took half of the angle not it should be half into d1 into d2 i did half into d1 by 2 into d2 by 2 and so this is pi into 24 into 24 by 25 into 96 24 by 96 is 1 by 4. 24 by 4 is 6. 6 pi by 25. Lovely. My original answer would have given us 24 pi by 25, which was, which luckily enough was not there in the choices. It's half into product of diagonals, not half into product of half the diagonals. Leaving home at the same time, Amal reaches office at 10:15 if he travels at 8 kilometers per hour, and at 9:40 if he travels at 15 kilometers per hour. Forget the starting time. it travels at 8 km per hour and it travels at 15 km per hour the ratio of the time taken should be 15 is to 8 if it takes 15 t time it will take 8 t time brilliant with this you are through that means the difference in time taken is 70 you start at 10:15 you start at 9:40 you start reaches office at 10:15 sorry reaches office at 10:15 reaches at 9:40 we travel at 15 km per hour the difference between these two times is 35 minutes 70 is 35 t is 5 this is 40 minutes this is 75 minutes we done so he he will reach in 40 minutes if we travel at 15 15 km per hour in 75 minutes if we travel at 8 km per hour the difference between those two is 35 minutes or it takes 40 minutes if he reaches at 9:40 am he starts at 9 am leaving home at 9 10 am at what speed in kilometers per hour must he travel so as to as to reach office exactly at 10 am or he should take 15 minutes okay. if he travels at 15 kilometers per hour he takes 40 minutes If you take 50 minutes, what speed should he travel? 15 into 40 by 50. Take more time. We'll take lesser. 15 by 5 is 3. 3 into 4, 12 kilometers per hour. Remember, I'm not converting this to hour. I'm not finding the distance. I'm just saying speed into time. Speed into time. And a lot of these speed time distance questions, especially in this format, which become much simpler if you can just think in terms of ratios. ratio of time speeds is 8 is to 15 ratio of time taken will be 15 is to 8 that's all the moment you grab that the starting time is known you know the starting time is 9 he takes 40 minutes at 15 km per hour he has to take 50 minutes 
how much what speed should you be traveling at 12 kilometers per hour a b is 432 b c is 96 a into b is 432 b into 6 c is 96 at positive integers c less than 9 product is involved so as much as possible keep the numbers as low as possible or as close to each other as possible c is less than 9 c could be 8 12 into 8 works 432 is 216 into 2 2 cube into 3 cube into 2 this is 2 power 4 into 3 cube keeping it in terms of prime factorization could be easier c could be 8 b could be 12 keep it close c could be 6 b could be 16 can 4 won't work 4 5 won't work 4 into 24 3 into 32 2 into 48 1 into 96 i think is outlandish even this we don't need to worry about it's one of these four and whichever one works so if b were let's say b is 12 b is 16 b is 24 b is 32 b cannot even be 32 that is 2 power 5 only 2 power 4 into 3 cube a what should a be b is 2 square into 3 a should be 2 square into 3 square remaining 36 b is 16 a is 27 b is 24 2 cube into 3 2 into 3 square a should be 18 lovely so we have a b c a could be 36 b could be 12 c could be 8 this looks nice or a is 27 b is 16 c is 6 b is 24 a is 18 c is so b being sorry a is 18 b is 24 c is 4 one of these is the answer this is minus 9 Plus four minus two, so this is better. I'm just comparing. Minus nine plus eight minus two. This will be better. Twenty-seven plus sixteen plus sixteen plus six twenty-two. Twenty-two plus twenty-seven is forty-nine. Twenty-eight plus eighteen is forty-six. Forty-six is better. Okay. Let's look at this one. If y is a negative number such that two power y square log five to the base three equal to five power log three to the base two. And so, very often in these kind of log questions, where an exponent is there and log is there, a simple trick in the book is take log on both sides. That might simplify something. And so, I'm going to try to do that. Take log on both sides, and we'll try to do this. So, this becomes y square log five to the base three times log two is equal to log three to the base two times log 5 this is 5 par log 3 to the base 2 so this will be log 3 to the base 2 times log 5 log 5 to the base 3 here and a log 5 here so we can choose the base to be 3 with our hands we can choose any base if we do that then this log 5 to the base 3 this log 5 to the base 3 these two get cancelled so we have y square here equal to log 3 to the base 2 by log 2 to the base 3 log 2 to the base 3 is 1 by log 3 to the base 2 so this is nothing but y square equals log 3 to the base 2 whole square or y should be log 3 to the base 2 but the problem here is we know y is negative it has been given very clearly that y is negative so y is not log 3 to the base 2 it is log 3 to the base 2 Times minus one is minus of log three to the base two. Log three to the base two and minus of log three to the base two is nothing but log one by three to the base two. Two par something is three. Two par minus of something minus of the same thing will be one by three. So minus log three to the base two is nothing but log one by three to the base two. We're looking for a choice that says that it's just this. Beautiful question, nice, wonderful, challenging question. What you're looking for here when you're combining exponents and log, the first step of unlocking. Let us take log on both sides. That's a beautiful trick. So keep that in mind. The moment you take log on both sides and you're plugging that in, now the second trick is there's a there's a log five to the base three here. We can choose any base. 
choose the base to be 3. That means you put a base 3 here and a base 3 here. These two get, get cancelled, knocked off. After this, log 3 to the base 2 and log 2 to the base 3 are just reciprocals of each other. Final thing, when you come here, you have to keep in mind that the question clearly states that y is a negative number. That's something to keep in mind. So the answer is log 1 by 3 to the base 2. On a rectangular metal sheet of area 135 square inches, a circle is painted such that the circle touches two opposite sides. If the area of the sheet left unpainted is two-thirds of the painted area in the perimeter of the rectangle. I'm going to draw the first diagram here. And so there is a breadth, there is a length to this. A circle is painted such that the circle touches two opposite sides. Obviously, it will be this. If the area, the circle is painted, area of the sheet left unpainted is two-thirds area of the area of the painted area. That is, this area is three. This area is two. Right? Quite simply, we need to find a link between the radius and the length. Right? So, how do we do that? Let's assume a radius of this circle R. Right? B is two R. L is one thirty-five by 2r. Area is 135 square inches. And so this area is 3. The overall area is 5. So we can find area of the painted region. This is 135 into 3 by 5. So 135 into 3 by 5 is pi r square. We figure that out. We are through. So 135 into 3 by 5 equals pi r square. This is this is 135 by 5 is 27, 27 into 3 is 81, 81 by pi equals r square or r is 9 by root pi. We want to find a perimeter of the rectangle, then the breadth is 18 by root pi, it is twice r radius, the length is 135 by 18 by root pi. 135 is a multiple of 9, it becomes 15, this is 2, it is 15, sorry, 15 root pi by 2. Looking at 2 times length plus breadth, so twice of length is, is 15 root pi plus 36 by root pi. Looking for a choice that is 15 root pi plus 36 by root pi. Let us see how, whether the, that works out. We're taking a root pi out common. We can take a 3 out common. So we take a 3 root pi out common. There will be 5 left here plus 12 by pi. Yep. Luckily enough, we have a choice that matches 3 root pi into 5 plus 12 by 5. Yeah. And very interesting question, but not, no rocket science here. The key thing, this is, this is 2 thirds of this. Or if this is 3, this is 2. The moment you write the ratio down like that, we know area of circle is 3 fifth area of the, of, the, of the rectangle. Rectangle area is 135, 3 fifth of that is 81. From that, we get the radius. Twice of radius is breadth, 135 by breadth is length, and then add up and manipulate root pi, the rest of it. Fine. Lovely question, but not, not too difficult. Let's look at this one. This again with the percentages. Should be interesting. In a group of people, 28% of the members are young while the rest are old. 65% of the members are literate. And 25% of the literates are young. The percentage of old people among the illiterates is nearest to. Look at this one. It should be simple. 28% are young. Rest are old. So 28% young. Old is 72%. The standard template. 65% are literates. So literates 65%. So 35% are not literate. And 25% of the literates are young. So 25% of these are young. 25% of 65, half of 65 is 32.5. Half of that is 16.25% are young. Then the percentage of old people among the illiterates is nearest to. So we want to find among the illiterates what percentage, what number is old. We find that, then we can do that by that and then simplify. Out of 65%, 16.25% are young, the remaining are old. Okay. So we can find the old here, plonk that here, find the not literate and then simplify there. Or conversely, we can say 
among the young people 16.25 percent are literate 16.25 so not literate would be the remaining 28 minus 16 is 12 this is 11.75 so to, out of 28 percent 16.25 percent are, are literate 11.75 are not literate this is the young population so this is 11.75 the remaining is here 35 minus 12 is 23 this will be 23.25 percent so what percentage of this number is this number that's our question so we're looking for 23.25 divided by 35 into 100 so i'm going to do multiply by 4 the numerator and denominator because i don't want to deal with 0 0.25 23.25 into 4 is, is 92 93 by 140 into 100 so 930 by 14 whatever that is it is 66 i would take case at 66 930 by 14 should be 66 point something that's the answer we're looking for standard question the same data set broken in two ways young and old literate and illiterate and then if you're given what percentage of literate are young or what percentage of old people are illiterate you can fill pretty much everything else this is a standard template you should have plenty of practice on this template wonderful we're going to start doing this one an alloy is prepared by mixing three metals a b and c in the proportion 3 is to 4 is to 7 by volume Weights of the same volume of the metals A, B, and C are in the ratio of 5 is to 2 is to 6. In 130 kilogram, etc., etc., we'll come to the question part later. There are three metals A, B, and C. This has volume in the ratio 3 is to 4 is to 7. So if you have 14 liters, then there are seven lit 3 liters of this, 4 liters of this, and 7 liters of that. For the same volume, that is, if you have 1 liter of A, 1 liter of B, and 1 liter of C, then the weights are in the ratio of 5 is to 2 is to 6. So for one liter, you can say it's five kilograms, two kilograms, six kilograms. Why am I saying that? Because the, the, the link between these two just jumps out. The ratio of volumes is this. Ratio of weights for unit volume is five is to two is to six. For one liter of A, that weighs five kilograms. Three liters will weigh three into five. One liter of B weighs two kilograms. Four liters will weigh four into two. So the ratio by weight is going to be 15 is to 8 is to 42 with that we're pretty much done and so so the ratio by weight is 15 is to 8 is to 42 the question here is 130 kilograms of the alloy the weight in kilogram of the metal c is so 15 is to 8 is to 42 add all three up this is 65 units so 65 units correspond to 130 kilograms this is lovely into 2 42 units should correspond to 84 kilograms Luckily, the numbers just fall in place. 65 units is 130. So 42 units will be 84 kilograms. A gentleman decided to treat a few children in the following manner. He gives half of his total stock of toffees and one extra to the first child. And then half of the remaining stock along with one extra to the second. And continues giving away in this fashion. His total stock exhausts after he takes care of five children. How many toffees were there in a stock? In that? Lovely. Let's assume he starts with N. Then he gives away n by 2 plus 1. Or what will he have? He will have n by 2 minus 1. And then of this, he gives away half plus 1. Half of n by 2 minus 1 plus 1 he gives away. Or half of n by 2 minus 1 minus 1 he will retain. Straight away we can sense there will be an n by 4 term sitting here. And then there will be an n by 8, n by 8 minus 1 by 4, something like that. And so n by 16 that becomes complicated right these kind of questions one very simple rule don't start from the first child till the end start from right to left right? what am i going to do we know that the last child gets half plus one extra and at that time he runs out and i'm going to think about the fifth kid think about what does he have with him when he goes to the fifth kid he gives away half plus one so before he gives away the last one, he's given away half of what he had. That means that half of what he had should be equal to this one. Or when he goes to the fifth kid, he should have had two. Half of two is one, plus one is two, he goes to zero. So when he goes to the fifth kid, he has two chocolates with him. Now let's go one more step back. He's given a half of what he had and one more. 
after which he is left with two. So before giving that one more, he should have three. That is half of what he had. Or before he goes to the fourth kid, he should have had six chocolates. Half of six is three, plus one is four. He gives away four, he has two remaining. Now we know the mechanism. Two plus one into three. Zero plus one into two. Six plus one into three. That is 14. Sorry, into two. Six plus one, seven into two. Half of what he had plus one. So minus one. So we are doing it the other way around. To six add one, seven. Into two is 14. To 14 add one. Into two is 30. To 30 add one. Into two is 62. He has 62 to begin with. He gives away 32 for the first kid. He has 30 remaining. He gives away 16 for the second kid. Has 14 remaining. Gives away 8. Has 6 remaining. Gives away 4. Has 2 remaining. Gives away the 2. Or he should have started with 62 trophies. And so these questions, the kind of questions become very simple. If you start from the last step backwards. He finally runs out of toffees after he has given to the fifth kid. So think about how much he had when he's going to the fifth kid. And then just work backwards. Once you know the mechanics, it is plus one into two, plus one into two, plus one into two. And do any, any math after that. Wonderful. Let's do this one. A solution of volume 40 liters has dye in water in the proportion 2 is to 3. Water is added to the solution to change this proportion to 2 is to 5. If one fourth of this diluted solution is taken out, how many liters of dye must be added to the remaining solution to bring the proportion back to 2 is to 3? It looks like there's lots of data here, but it's a sitter, it's a, it's a proper sitter. And let's go step by step. 40 liters dye in water. So I'm going to write down 40 dye water. In the ratio of 2 is to 3, 2 fifth of this, 3 fifth of this, 16 and 24. Water is added to the solution to change this proportion to 2 is to 5. So we are adding water. So water will change. But the dye remains as 16. This ratio is 2 is to 5. 2 into 8 is 16. 5 into 8 is 40. So this should be 40. Lovely. If one fourth of this diluted solution is taken out, one fourth of the overall solution is taken out. That means one fourth of this will get taken out. One fourth of this will get taken out. So finally, we'll have 12 liters of this, 30 liters of this. One fourth of 40 is 10. One fourth of 16 is 4. That gets taken out. So we have 60, 12 and 30 now. Now, how many liters of dye must be added to the remaining solution to bring the proportion back to 2 is to 3? What should we add here? So the, the ratio remains as 2 is to 3. This is going to stay as 30. This should be 2 is to 3. If this is 30. This should be 20. This is 20. We are adding 8 liters. We are not doing anything algebraic, not plunking, plunking in a lot of formulae. One very simple, very important idea when you are going from one mixture to another by just changing one of the entities. Then remember that the other entity doesn't change. It sounds like it's very complicated. It's not. Here we are going from this mixture to this one by adding water. Therefore, track dye. Here, we are going from this mixture to this by adding dye. Therefore, track water. That's it. And so, make sure that whatever is not changing, you are anchoring around that. This question becomes very simple. Yeah.